All right, well, uh, it is very late and I have not shown this technique uh, for a while. I promised I would and just things just kept getting in the way. So I am going to show how, uh, uh, you know, you can affect dunes after the fact and shift them around based on other shapes. So uh, let's see. So first off, this, this is the final result. You can see this is what we want uh, so the shape of this mountain is affecting the dunes around it and um, so what we do is let's see let's start with just a simple mountain so this is your typical mountain node uh, the only big change I've made is that I have turned on displacement here in the post effects you can turn that on here so uh, basically, it's just this giant warped uh, thing. I'm, I'm not really concerned about the mountain. I just needed something with a, uh, you know, a sprawling shape that would uh, help affect the dunes in a, in a few different directions. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to the mountain. Well, first we actually zero border it. We just, you know, kind of don't want it to uh, affect the edges. So we just zero border it a little bit, and that's it. And so we're done with the mountain for now. And then we make our dunes. So the dunes are kind of, um, you know, your your stock standard stuff. I you can see here the settings are you know default. I haven't really done anything. Uh, so those are our two main elements: the mountain and the dunes. And so what we do is we combine the two to create this, where uh, I'm using max blend mode and the ratio is 100 uh, percent you can also get it from this um, preset here so we're basically getting the best of these two from the height so we're, we're, you know the dunes are kind of um, covering up the lower parts of the mountain but these dunes are uh, quite um, sequential they're just moving in this direction they're not being affected by these shapes but what we do is we create um, what I like to call an intentional orphan. So usually with our nodes, we try to use the output that we get and try to keep it alive as far as possible. Uh, but in this case, you will see I'm using the separation output. So I have the separation mask turned on, but I'm not using the main output. So. Uh, let me show you what the separation mask looks like. I'm going to turn on the 2D viewport and I'm going to go to the separation mask. So there, this is basically creating a mask where the black represents the dunes, the white represents the the mountain. So that's like the the stencil created from our max mode uh, blending. So we take this and then we blur it. And then I use the sign effect to create this shape and so that's pretty much it there's nothing sophisticated going on but what we do is then take the dunes these and then displace them but instead of using the normal noise uh, I choose the custom method and then I plug in the sign in the custom um, uh, port so what that does is it starts uh, displacing the 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 existing dunes based on the shape from the separation which has been signed which creates this kind of like a, a wall so um, you'll see here I have chosen not to go with uniform uh, I'm using vertical strength uh, and and very little normal strength so that's kind of not exactly a fixed formula um, you have to experiment, experiment a bit based on whatever shape you have so in this case the vertical strength helped more so I just chose that so you can just play with that a bit uh, and that's pretty much all you need to do with the displacement so when we get the displacement out then I mean this looks okay but this is not that realistic so we blur it which takes off those very sharp pointy edges from everything and then we go and use recurve and recurve with these settings here, uh, they're almost the default. The duration is a bit high. Uh, it then shapes those uh, slightly blurry things into uh, a, a dune-like formation again, pushing it from one direction and accumulating it more on the other. 
and that is our shifted dune and so now we do the same combine that we did before with the uh, with the dunes and the zero border of the mountains but this time we take the output and so there you can see now our main mountain is there and the dunes are being affected by this shape or at least it appears to be uh, but it kind of is well semantics really doesn't matter anyways so we take this output and uh, we add sat maps on this so that's for creating the the dunes color like we'll do something else for the mountains and so if you take the direct output or actually rather uh, I've taken the zero borders output I put protrusion here um, you can do texture or a bunch of other masks there you know there uh, uh, we have a, a couple of other videos that show that there are lots of quick starts doesn't matter so this is where you do your mountains um, texture work don't worry about what happens with the dunes just do your mountain as if it were just the mountain and so I'm gonna plug the protrusion into the sat maps so you just have a simple um, uh, a, a sandy color map here and then you combine the two and just like you did the main um, uh, a mix with the separation uh, you know this is like a, uh, oh there we go so that's the separation right there it's feeding into the mask of the mixer and now here you can combine the two you can have like as much um, sand versus mountain ratio uh, what helps here is like the the bottom part you know stays untouched uh, you can do a lot more than this is a very simple method you can make this look much better if you have like a little bit of blurring around the edges here you can do um, like a sediment pass and add that on top of this and a bunch of other things but the, this is the basic concept so again we just uh, owe all of this to this uh, note that I call the intentional orphan so we do the max combine we don't use the output we take the separation output this blur it sign and then use that as a custom source of displacement for our dunes blur recurve and then combine it back with the original mountain then you can use the separation to texture it and uh, you're done and that's it that's a handy little trick that can help you create a lot of different things and that's kind of the idea behind the intentional orphans is you uh, you can create an effect use some of it but don't uh, you know try to have everything that you created from every node become part of the main uh, landscape you can just have this as data data that can help you know do something uh, alternative than the primary input and output and I hope that trick will help you create a bunch of new things so that's it this has been a very very short video uh, and I hope you guys have fun with this trick <laughs>